So, remember this? Light foreground over dark background? How's that working out for you? Never fear, reinforcements are on the way. On the way. Hello Minders, welcome back to the Mind of Watercolor. So glad you joined me today. Remember this, we did this a few weeks ago, a couple weeks ago, three weeks ago, I don't know. Uh, three methods for doing light over dark backgrounds. Well, this, what we're gonna do today is what, uh, and you school teachers out there, correct me if I'm wrong, this is gonna be uh, what we call a reinforcement exercise. I'm gonna take the middle method which is probably the most detailed and flexible method. It's great for doing a finished painting and we're gonna work through a real painting, an actual painting, painting. And that way you'll get to see me apply masking fluid and what I do with the painted area that's left afterwards and how I meld the background with the foreground. So I really had a great time doing this painting and I just want you to join me and paint with me as we do a actual light over dark background painting, okay? No time for chit chat today, buddy. We gotta get right to painting. What are you gawking at? Close your mouth. All right, so I've got a little simple composition here that I'm gonna do, and uh, you can't see it. I've got just very lightly, I've indicated for myself where my trees are gonna be back here, and, and I've got uh, sort of a hill rising up here with like it'll be a grassy area and I'm going to try to get some wildflowers in that light over dark kind of treatment and we're going to start out just by using masking fluid and first I'm going to use my ugly brush this is just a brush I created by dipping it into so it's a cheap really cheap bristle brush and I just dipped it smashed it down dipped it into masking fluid and all I do with it is just kind of bounce it around it creates these little dots and stuff and you can smear it around and do all kind of little things with it I'll take my rubber tipped uh, color shaper, rubber applicator, and just kind of spread this out down here. Now it's going to be dark behind this, and I'm going to have you know little weedy things, maybe some little wildflowers, uh, but it's going to. Uh, course that will be white where that is and then it's going to graduate down to a darker and then I'm going to have another line of weeds kind of over here so this is going to be a little bit complex but it ought to give you a good idea of how you can do this with uh, masking fluid You bounce it hard enough, it'll even spatter a little around there. Now I have a, a episode on masking fluid. Um, I don't get into a lot of depth, I just basically show um, several of the methods. Uh, I, but one thing I will mention is if you put it on heavy, the heavier you put it on, and it depends on the brand and the paper, but the more likely you are to tear the paper when you tear it up. So I try to, I try to keep the gloves from getting too heavy duty, if you know what I mean. No, I think that's good. I'm going to go with that, so we will let that uh, masking fluid dry. The masking fluid is dry. 
So I'm going to start with wet and wet washes. Now normally you do skies first, or I like to do skies first, but I'm going to do it last. I don't think I'm going to do anything complicated with the sky. I may just have a wisp of something. So I'm not going to worry about that. Um, I'm going to start out with this dark tree line back here. And it's all going to kind of meld together in a wet and wet fashion. So I'm going to pre-wet everything first. Where I'm going, at least everything where I'm going to paint. Now this is not, I wouldn't necessarily call this a spontaneous painting, but in some regards, all landscapes I do are somewhat spontaneous, because I never know exactly what I'm going to end up with until I end up with it. And um, I kind of react. I spend a lot of time looking at what's happening and reacting to what watercolor is doing. So this is just much more successful for me that way. And that's where my masking fluid grass and flowers are and where I want it to be the darkest. So the tree line is going to kind of go off in the angle off in the distance so it can get a little bit uh, paler and bluer. And I'm going to coax this wash over here. i got a little bit of a side hill kind of a thing. Pick that up a little bit here. Matter of fact, I think what I'm going to do is blot right here. Kind of create a bit of an edge to that hill. When you're painting with watercolor, you got to be brave. Or you might never, you might never experience you know what watercolor can can give you I know I say that a lot but it's so true I like having this light area so I'm gonna leave that splash into it a little bit my second layer of mask is there so I'm gonna darken that Right in there. Oh, that's pretty. That's kind of a pretty abstract all by itself. I've got an edge there. I want to blend out that edge. So I'm, I'm getting my, my bristle brush glazing blender. Getting it damp. Blotting it out. And I'm going to lose that edge. Thank you, Sterling Edwards, for teaching me that technique. It's been so useful. What I'm going to do is take the oval wash that I had and blot it so it's mostly dry. Light source is going to come this way, I think. Using a Cosmotop, Da Vinci Cosmotop spin. It's a small oval wash. It's stiffer than my black velvets. And um, it's helping me blend here a little bit better. All right, well, we're going to let that dry. And I think I've got something to work with on the final wet on dry painting. 
So we'll let that dry and then we'll come back and peel the mask and see what we got. All right, now I'm starting to remove the mask. Let's see what we got. Um, again, using this Canson heritage paper, so I'm being very careful. I don't know. Uh, anytime you use a mask, masking fluid on a paper you're not familiar with, you should test it or be careful when you lift it. It might tear the paper. All right, so the mask is completely removed, and that's what I got. Now that has left me a nice little canvas, so to speak, to paint on, and all of the edges have been defined. And I don't have to worry about painting around anything. That's the beauty of this masking uh, fluid process. So I think what I'm going to start doing now is blending in the bottom of these grassy areas so that they sort of graduate up and it's just kind of lifting this paint and uh, blurring out or fuzzing out the edges and then bringing some of that pigment up in very very light washes and I don't have to get rid of all the hard edges but But I do want to blend it in a little. You can already see how that works. When I'm done, I will not have all this stark whiteness here. I will be painting on that. And I can bring a lot of that color up in there because uh, if it's pale, because almost none of this am I going to leave stark white. But when you're painting in watercolor, especially if you're a purist and you don't want to use uh, white out of a bottle, paper is your white. I like to blur out edges and blend and soften edges in places and leave them in others. And I like it to look, when you're done, I like it to where it be where you can barely tell that masking fluid was even used. But properly used masking fluid is a powerful, powerful tool. All right, I've done some additional blending and I'm starting to work these trees back here. Uh, I didn't have that on, on video, but I uh, just did a little testing to see uh, what I thought I might want to do. Again, I'm trying to keep my, my center of interest coming up and around. So what I think I'm going to do is a little bit of lifting back here just to pull the eye into a little more detail back here. I like to keep working the thing as a whole. I, I, it's real tempting to kind of finish this out. I'm kind of thinking through how much detail I want back here and how far out I want it to go. I want this to kind of fade off into a fairly nebulous, dreamy landscape, although I think I'll have a few, just kind of hint at a few tree trunks over here. But uh, in order to kind of answer the question in my mind about how much detail I want over here, I'm just going to do a little edge lifting. This Canson paper has just been great for lifting technique. And I don't need a lot, I just want a little bit of highlighting to draw the eye out across this field, this background field. I definitely don't want to detail that whole field, but just trying to figure out how much I do want.
Okay, it's looking pretty good. And really it's just a process of kind of weaving, blending uh, through lifting and scrubbing and weaving detail together. Um, you know, while making sure that the detail serves the painting. It serves to, to weave it together. It's not just superfluous detail. I think I'm going to go ahead and put a little gel pen in there. I make the rules. I make the rules. But you know, this is a great use for gel pen. Um, just, you don't want to use much. You, know, you want to keep the character of watercolor as much as possible. I I do. Let, let me just say I want to. I don't like to impose, you know, rules on others, especially since there's so many fantastic uh, mixed media artists out there. And that's good. I'm getting some smaller scale uh, kind of weedy elements and it looks like this they're going over the hill. And I'll add a little color to that in a second. I think what I'm going to do is come over here and work on some distant. I just want something to kind of punctuate the end of this tree line. And some of this like loose tree canopy here looks a little out of scale. Add a little bit to the front of these. Faint things again like it's rolling off into the distance. And now see how the scale of those trees look different? And I'm gonna put some small tree trunks in there. And that'll add some visual interest to bring you back that way. And I don't have to add a lot of shadowing or or whatever. Um, aerial perspective principles just tell you that the further away you get the bluer things become and the less contrast and the less intense they become. The less contrast they have. All right, I like that. I'm gonna let that dry.
Well, here is the finished piece after uh, staring at it for two or three days and making some tweaks here and there. I'm pretty pleased with how it turned out. I hope you learned something in this tutorial and in this video. And I hope maybe this demonstrated a little more how masking fluid can really help your painting, especially where you need a lot of intricate detail over a dark background. Hope you'll give it a try. It's just a very, very powerful tool. Thank you everyone so much for watching, for liking and subscribing. I appreciate it. Thank you so much patrons. Couldn't be doing this without you. Thanks for taking a tangible part in supporting this channel. And we will see everyone in the next video. Bye-bye.